Thank you all so very much for joining us here this morning, Saturday, uh, March 19th here for the El Paso History Radio Show. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk, and uh, this is the place where we say that Texas history begins in El Paso, because it does, and that's an important thing to focus on here. And we are live on KTSM AM 690 and uh, streaming live on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show, and uh, remember, in El Paso, went up here shortly. People can also find us audio streaming live on the internet on uh, KTSMRadio.com when you then click the iHeartRadio Inc. And we are going to be talking today about the geologic history of the borderland, how the landscape we came to that we inhabit came to be and shaped the world around us. So joining me here in studio now, we do have uh, Eric Kappas, uh, Dr. Eric Kappas, and Jim Tolbert, CEO with uh, Celebrations of Our Mountains. So thank you all very much for being here with us today. Oh, thanks for having it's us. It's a pleasure. Absolutely, because, I mean, this, this is a topic that I talk more than a little bit frequently about to people who may be interested in such things or not interested but finding themselves i drag them into the interest because the way it works and the way that uh the features came to be is a fascinating bit of that then i mean everything flows from that more or less literally when you talk about rivers and such and uh, we're going to get into some of the geologic features when it comes to water but literally the way that things work here I mean, part of the reason we're called the Pass of the North is because of the geologic features, the way that it has been focused on. I mean, the political decisions that have been made about it in terms of like, you know, southern snow free routes. All of that is literally defined by then what is it present in our area. And the story of how we got here is fascinating and can still be very much seen today. And it's, uh, I mean, changing slowly as geog geology does. But I mean, you look at all the features around here, some within eyesight of our station here, and you get there and you have quite the story to tell mm -hmm. you do this place is phenomenal for the geology there's nowhere else like el paso for geology yeah i mean there's a reason that i mean uh, utep started as the college of mines because of the demands for mining in our area essentially and that is a direct result of the geology and the factors around here i mean it's the reason that we saw among other things uh, you know the spaniards come through and be interested in the area and then move further north here because they wanted to explore the geology explore what more or less they could extract from the geology in their cases here but i mean all of the definition of this i mean the baseline is then from what is going on with how we got here so one of the more interesting factors here that we uh, have you all with is of course celebrations of our mountains people who have listened to the show for a long time may be familiar with the name but if they have any confusion about what you all do jim particularly how do you define what it is the work that you all do well, we do several things. One is that we take people on recreational field trips, but they're also informational. They're also educational. Uh, and we want people to know about our mountains, our desert, our waterways, and, our, and the history that uh, ensued from the geography. So all of these things we do, we've been doing it since uh, 1994 when Professor Phil Goodell of UTEP mm -hmm began the, the program. He wanted to take the general public on the same kind of field trips that he was taking students. And it just snowballed from there. Uh, I took over in uh, 2006, uh, expanded the fall program, and then started expanding it into to other times of the year. For example, uh, Earth Month. That was the first thing. Ah, of and now the board that. has... Uh, uh, said that we're going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to do something all year round. And so we're, uh, I'm always putting together field trips and Eric is putting together field trips and, we, and we're, we're getting things, I think, an exciting program for people. Oh, yeah. I mean, you all have quite the list here already of both the ones coming up and that have our, our planned or in the works here. I mean, that's another factor of our geology, more location in terms of uh, latitude and longitude, I guess I should say, than anything. But that's also a factor that we'll get into here because our we have the ability to, for the most part, do year-round events, another wonderful aspect of our sun city that we get 300 days uh, plus of sun a year, except for the, well, as we saw, uh, the end of last year, beginning of this year, that roughly two weeks of winter, as I call it anyway, because, uh, well, that's about what we get, even if it's not all at once. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so we can have a lot of great events there, and that's a very good thing here because, uh, I mean, the ability to enjoy it, I mean, we also have the history moment coming up a little bit later today, an hour or two from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk about hiking in the Franklin Mountains, something I did a lot in my youth as well. 
along with him. But, I mean, the ability to get out here in it, I mean, even just you want to get to another unique factor of our area, the fact that we have the Franklin Mountains almost uh, and the Franklin Mountains State Park entirely within city limits here because it can, and it, I mean, it defines the growth of our city as well. Fascinating stuff here. But one of the more interesting kind of tidbits that comes out of this, okay, I had a number in my head that, uh, Eric, we were talking before the show, I may be slightly wrong about, but that there has been lots of times that this region of the world has been entirely covered in water um so the oldest i mean the rocks tell the story right and Mm -hmm. so the um, the rocks give clues about the environment that used to be here and the very oldest rock layers preserved here are from shallow marine from from the ocean Mm -hmm. and so uh our oldest rocks formed in the ocean and then uh, most of the rock layers here formed under the ocean. And then, of course, uh, once North America was assembled and looks like it does today, um, the Chihuahuan Desert, the, the Rio the Rio Grande did not drain to the Gulf of Mexico. And so it filled up northern Chihuahua and this region mm. with enormous lakes. So if we didn't have the ocean here, then we had giant lakes. Um, those, of course, all went away kind of at the end of the ice age Um, but i mean we could have a lake here again one day uh, maybe in thousands of years but we could so besides the serious upheavals that people expect when you're talking about mountains here we've seen just in the carving away of our landscape by the rio i mean i took a picture that i couldn't get to load properly here but i mean the the mesas in between uh, you know mesa street and then over in uh you know santa teresa and sunland park there that used to connect at certain points and then got worn away by the rio grande itself here to become the again the landscape that we see now so the way that water has interacted with their area i mean there are certain exhibitions like over the centennial museum right now about how water i mean in it affects the human history of our area, but literally the way it carves away at things here has been significant. And that's part of the reason why you get, uh, you know, marine fossils all over our area. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, I mean, what you're talking about with the mesas, they even have some marine fossils from these giant lakes, but water, water in the ocean almost always just deposits sediment. So Hmm. dirt and, you know, small ground up grains of rock, basically. But water on land can do two things. During colder periods, it deposits sediment. And during warmer periods, like uh, when we live now, Hmm. the water erodes sediment. And so those mesas, those stepwise mesas, the the Rio originally carved a huge valley on on the west side and and actually on the east side of the mountain. And then the during warmer spells, the Rio would fill up this big valley that it carved. So each one of those mesas, you know, from top down is actually getting younger, uh, younger and younger filling events of the valley. And right hmm. now we're in a warm stage for, I guess, 10,000 years or so. And um, so the Rio has chopped back down through all the mesas again. Well, that's fascinating. I didn't even know that one. And I try to be informed about these things and how we get there because I like talking to people about it. But I guess there's always more to learn. That's why I love doing this kind of a program here. So we've got some of the uh, graphics out here about the, okay, the number I had had was about 11 different times that this area was covered by seas, lakes, bodies of water here. And so we're not sure about that as with your study and research here. I'm not sure where I got my number, but the other way that you put it that I like a little bit better now talking before the show is that we've been in this, if you're tracking the history of this region of the world through geologic history, as we understand it, it's been underwater more than it hasn't. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, you don't, you look around here and you don't think of El Paso as being uh, an ocean environment, but Mm -hmm. actually this little spot on our continent has been under the ocean more than it's been out of the ocean, at least since, you know, at least for the last billion years. So again, fast, again, the, that blows a lot of people's minds. And the way I usually put it, I mean, that we've got the beach, we just don't have the water for the most part, but the water has been here. So we've got some of the pictures here that you pulled up here, Eric. So with the first one here, we are looking at the late Proterozoic. And this, if people are confused as heck what we're looking at these are the land masses that made up many different continents but kind of centered around what would become north america right 
Well, so most people have heard of the the supercontinent Pangaea, right? Mm -hmm. Most of us learned in middle school that the continents move around the surface of the planet and they occasionally bump into each other and they make supercontinents. And the last one was Pangaea, but there were at least two, maybe three other supercontinents before that in Earth's history. Um, the one before Pangaea was called Rodinia and Rodinia formed uh, at one point eight to 1.2 billion years ago i guess is a good so mm -hmm. a long long time ago um no 1.2 i'm sorry not 1.8 that's another one that's another one okay um, and so rodinia started to break up and um the the rocks that were deposited on that continent um, got broken up by a bunch of granite and those are our oldest rocks here in el paso and they're they're exclusively found on kasner range and so mm -hmm. there's um our oldest rock layer is the, called the Kasner Marble or the Kasner Formation and named after Kasner Range. And um, so we're, it, it's quite difficult to go out there and do some research. I mean, I'm not just going to go marching yeah. around off Trans Mountain Road. Um, but there's, so there's, our oldest rocks are uh, some of the least understood rock layers in the region um, because of Kasner Range. But at the same time, They've also been protected from vandal vandalizing people and from destruction, from construction. Um, so in a way, Kasner Range has kind of preserved those those rocks for us okay. and is keeping them. Um, hopefully, you know, I mean, not to plug Kasner Range forever, um, but to plug Kasner Range forever. Um, preservation of that land mm -hmm. would um, would allow people like me access and there's a whole bunch of fantastic research to be done um, for example um, geologists are now finding trace fossils in those rocks and so our oldest trace fossils like um, burrows footprints things like that they're found on Kasner range and just to uh, plug it here, we have a little bit of video coming up right now of both uh, Trans Mountain Road and then a uh, Kasner Range from a uh, Capstone Productions uh, a video from uh, 2014 about conserving Kasner Range. So a little bit of some of those visuals we're talking about here because there's a lot to be looked at there. And again, for anyone unclear about why Kasner Range is an issue, it is a literal army range that was used for all level of ordnance that was available at the time until it stopped or are operating in you know, mid-last century as El Paso expanded. They now have moved out further into the desert, but there's still unexploded ordnance out there. It's very important to point out because anyone, uh, there's a lot of signs over there describing how uh, you should not be here. And uh, there have been incidences of explosions in the past, so don't go do that either is a very important point to make when we're discussing that area. Yeah, I mean, I've got a good eye for rock, and, and I follow footprints, so I know the ground pretty well. Um, I don't mess around out there. Yeah. Um, it, all it takes is one misstep and you're only half a person you know, or, or less or less. Yeah. Again, not to put too fine a point on it, but yeah, be careful as you're going out there. And that's even in some of the hikes we got coming up, Jim, and things like that. That is a very respected topic, I am sure. I mean, there's some events in the past where people will point out what kind of things can be found out there that will then um, blow up potentially still. So that's something that uh, just as we're talking about enjoying and getting around these areas, we want to keep in mind here. But uh, actually do for that first break of the hour right now, because uh, we got to go and take the break. So we're going to come back and talk more about the oceans and bodies of water that have covered this area, because we've just barely scratched the surface there with uh, one of the first times in far, far, far prehistory here. So again, we are joined here by Jim Tolbert and Eric Kappis with Celebration of Our Mountains, talking about the geologic history of our area and how we came to have the landscape we have. And then also very importantly, how you can enjoy it now in a safe way. There's, there's not all of them have booby traps with them essentially, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, don't, don't worry. That's uh that's the exception uh, rather than the rule here, but we're going to come back after this break and talk more about what we got going on with the landscape and what people can see. So uh, we'll be back after this break with more of the El Paso history radio show here on news radio, 690 KTSM. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. 
Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Thank you all so very much for being here with us here on News Radio 690 KTSM for the El Paso History Radio Show. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Uh, If you want to go there and see us on the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook, we have our weekly promo announcements on the topics each week. Also have a, well, the various social media pages and the videos that we have up on all of these to see free videos about El Paso history. YouTube specifically, YouTube dot com slash el paso history tv because the el paso gold dvds from capstone productions produced over the last couple of decades are fully online now for you to view again el paso history tv on youtube and also the 20 segments that were produced by capstone production and by a hand in as well in the back end of on abc7 that aired are also over there and of the all of the stuff that you can find about stuff being produced here and of course our live shows if you want to see is 
part of our archive. And also remember to support our advertisers. Pepe's Restaurant in Canyon Tio is home in is open for in-house dining at 6761 at Donovan Drive. You can call Pepe at 877-2152. That's 915-877-2152. Also the home of the one and only Margarita. I'll be going out there today. We all be joining us potentially to uh, enjoy, a, well, maybe not the one and only Margarita if you're not that kind of important the day, but anything else? <laughs> Uh, I have a field trip this afternoon. Oh, okay, y'all be r- busy. I'm rushing out <laughs> on the mountain, yeah. Ah, you got to get out there to uh, the place where you're very important. Well, uh, Jim, do you think you can join us? Uh, I might not be able to. I have a, an ecclesiastical job that I have to do. Uh, of course. So <laughs> I'll be out there anyway, so we'll be talking further about this here. But uh, we are, of course, uh, going to be talking further about the geologic history. So we just began scratching the surface with some of this here as we have a lot more comments coming in here uh, about uh, the things going on. Uh, on social media here. So again, joined here in studio by Jim Tolbrook and Eric Kapp is here with Celebrations of Our Mountains. And again, we were just really starting to get into some of the features here of when this specific plot of land that we inhabit here and uh, the if they, the currents of history that have come across it, geologically speaking, we just began talking about one of the defined times in the uh, uh, Proterozoic era, if I'm saying that right, uh, that we were covered by oceans. But you got a whole bunch of more maps here. So this is the first one that we popped up here. And if I'm describing pictures here to you all, it's because we do have them up over on our social media. So we're looking at the late Proterozoic as uh, one of them here. As, uh, but then, well, the next one that we had was then in the uh, Silurian era. You can see how the continents continue to shift and change. And so roughly when we're looking at this kind of a map, where are we now? So generally, this is um, a Merocentric. This is an Amerocentric interpretation. And so usually North America is placed right in the center. Um, these, of course, come from a website. You can Google paleogeography. There's also videos that you can mm-hmm. watch of the continents sliding around on the surface, bumping into each other. Um, but this is a very uh, North America centered interpretation, right? Because, um, yeah, because these things were made in North America. So generally, okay. the big, the biggest continent right in the middle there, off to the left, that's North America. And so um, the the question would kind of come up, and okay, then looking at this kind of a map. How do you define where we are right now in comparison to that? And it's based on the plate tectonics of how the continental plates have moved and more or less, we had again, rock records that you were kind of talking about, uh, to which I think, because uh, we got a short segment we're going through right now, uh, is important to note that uh, y'all do hikes too as well, right? Yeah, um, I, we normally do, I guess every couple of years, we do a Trans Mountain Road hike. And so our trend, of course, we stay on the road because you can't go off on Kasner Range. Yeah, again, of course, um, important. Yeah. But um, our, our Trans Mountain Road hike goes through all these Proterozoic rocks. And um, we most people don't know this, but we have a, a billion year old super volcano here. So we had a super volcano in El Paso. Uh, and um, it's long dead. Don't worry. It's It's been asleep for a billion years. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good. Um, but the as our mountain, as our Franklin Mountains rose up, it exposed a cross section of this volcano. So you Hmm. can start in the belly of the volcano uh, over by the archaeology museum. And then as you make your way up towards the top, you're going through these rocks of of the super volcano. And people come from all over North America. I've run into groups on Trans Mountain Road from Nova Scotia, which is way far northeast, you know, off north of Maine, I guess you could say. And so... Groups come from Eastern Canada all the way to El Paso to view the rocks on Trans Mountain Road. So super famous Proterozoic section. Most of those layers are from shallow marine environment. So they used to be limestones or uh, tidal flats or shallow sandstones, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, And there's several thousand feet of marine rocks just on Trans Mountain Road. But we're only getting through the first picture, you know, (laughs) I mean, we're not even I'm not even done talking about the first picture. But still, um, I don't think we're doing a Trans Mountain Road or I should say we we don't yet have a Trans Mountain Road. That sounds like a good way to put it planned. (laughs) Uh, If you would like to lead this trip, please contact Jim Tolbert. (laughs) 
Um, Absolutely. Because, I mean, that's, again, another important part of what you all do with the organization, Celebration of Our Mountains, is get people out and experiencing what we've got here. So tell you what, Jim, let's talk more about that. Again, we are joined here by Jim Tolbert and Eric Kappas with Celebration of Our Mountains. we got to take that next break right now. Here's our short segment. But we got a lot more to talk about both the history and how people can enjoy it. So let's talk a little bit more about a couple of those hikes coming out of this. Again, we'll be back right after this break with more of the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690. KTSM. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. 
We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com, and you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Thanks for being here with us again here on the El Paso History Radio Show. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. This is the point in the show which we would usually mention the upcoming events coming with us, celebrations of our mountains, but given that we have the gentlemen here in studio involved with the organization, we'll defer to them here in just a second. But just want to remind you about some more of the sponsors of our show. Our friends at Monterey Asset Management have changed their name to M1EP Management Corporation. Their website, m1ep.com. That's M numeral one EP.com. And you can find them also by going to 915-592-4549. That's 915-592-4549 here. So, again, joined here in studio by Eric Kappas and Jim Tolbert with Celebrations of Our Mountains here. So we would usually at this point in the show mention a couple of the upcoming hikes, and there are a few that make no mistake. But given that we got you all here to talk about it, there's a few finer points to be made about how these happen, one word I've been neglecting to say is that these events are free because that's a very important point of how y'all put these together and how you present them to the community, right? Right. The only the only cost might be a, a park fee, but we don't charge a fee for going out and hiking with us. Absolutely. So yeah. it's free, and uh, people want to find the information on uh, what you got coming up. It's a celebrationofourmountains.org is the website to find everything that's uh, coming that'll up, right? Get it, that'll get you to it. Just celebrationofourmountains.org or just Google celebration of our mountains and you'll find us. Yeah, that's the nice thing about Google searches here. But uh, And Eric, you want to talk about some of the specific ones coming up, particularly in terms of just the organizational history, like, like a Bishop's Cap coming up tomorrow. So Bishop's Cap is uh, up in the southern part of the Oregon Mountains. It's on the way to Las Cruces. Uh, I know one thing, I'm probably stealing Jim's Jim's moment here, but one thing is uh, the field trips used to be only local, uh, led by UTEP geology professors, uh, Phil Goodell in the beginning. Um, but now, Jim, tell them, tell them where else we're taking field trips. So we're not just in El Paso anymore. Where are we going, Jim? Well, you know, for a couple of years now, we've gone down to Fort Davis, uh, especially to learn about the uh, volcanism down there. And, of course, the rich history of Fort Davis. So, you know, that's that's uh, probably the farthest extent that we've gone. But uh, I'm looking at a field trip to uh, Indian Hot Springs down at the south end of the Quitman Mountains, uh, which also has, uh, you know, bears some relationship to our history. The Buffalo Soldiers were at a mm, fort there, mm -hmm. Fort Quitman, and they actually had a, a, a battle with... Uh, Victorio's uh, Apaches, I think in 1880, and they, they didn't do too well. But, you know, we go down there, uh, we're looking at going out to the Salt Flats, which of course ties into El Paso history with the, oh, yeah. with the Salt War. Uh, we'll be looking at the Salt Flats, we'll be looking at the, the uh, Salt Basin, which is just north of the flats, uh, but part of that same, uh, I guess, geo geological uh, uh, formations down there so much to learn i mean there's uh, we do birding trips we do uh well, of course a lot of history trips now uh you know coming up will be a uh, uh, a trip around downtown which is architectural but we mm -hmm. also sometimes get into the history of of downtown el paso uh, we'll be going over to war as all of these are worse we're doing with tom lee institute Mm, they okay. have been a, a very good partner, and we're, we're, we really appreciate them. Hi, uh, a field trip coming up. We have two field trips coming up 
in the Mission Valley. The first one will take care of the Isleta and Socorro missions. And then the uh, second one will, will center around San Elizario. Uh, and those we're doing with the uh, uh, El Paso uh, Lower Valley, the El Paso uh, uh, Valley or Trail Valley Association. Okay. Yeah. So just, just lots of things to do. Yeah, the El Paso Mission Trail Association and the groups yeah, down there thank you. involved with here. Yeah, it's Leto yeah. Socorro and the Tiguas, the subtitle that you got there. Also, the Sandals are to, or coming up later in April as well. So you got a lot of good events coming in and around right. it. So it, Celebration of Our Mountains is kind of a you know core mission statement, but it expands much around that as well because the right. way you're offering not just the geology history, not just the natural history, but also the well, history, history, I guess you could put it that way. And we've gone into the uh, you know, Guadalupe Mountains several times now, especially in the fall when we know the leaves are starting to turn. Oh, yeah, and a little bit cooler out there as yeah. much as it can when we're yeah. still in the high desert anyway. Right, and later in June, we'll be going up to Cloudcroft to the Sunspot Observatory and learn something about uh, observing the sun. Man, and why, why people doing the reason? I mean, there's the love, the history of it here and uh, how we can get around and enjoy it is very important because it's one thing to just have the kind of academic knowledge about it and be able to talk that way, but getting out, seeing it, I don't do enough of it myself, but uh, the fact that you all doing it very much celebrated and applauded by us, of course, here. So uh, let's continue on here as much as we can this segment to talk about, again, that, uh, well, the ocean's history anyway here. So uh, people have been watching over on the social media here. They've seen a couple of the images that we have put up, including the Proterozoic. Then we got into the Silurian. You can see how the continents move this way. And then we had the Devonian era. And then, again, kind of importantly, part of the way people can see how this is is by some of these uh, trips and tours that you all have focus on then what you can see the rocks that were, you know, created or deposited, as you put it in this era, right, Eric? Yeah, so like I said, the rocks tell the story. And so the best way for, for someone like me to tell the story is to bring people out there and, and show them the rocks and show them why geologists interpret things the way they do. And um, also, you know, you can talk about a fossil, but that's nothing compared to actually seeing the fossil or, or in some cases collecting the fossil. Um, so the in both of these images, Silurian and Devonian, they're quite similar. Um, this was during uh, assembly of Pangaea. So Pangaea was being built at this time. The continents were colliding. And North America is uh, tilted a little bit. I guess Florida is more towards the south. And so El Paso would be at the middle left side of that image. You can see there's there's two colors there's like the dark blue which is the deep ocean mm -hmm. and then the light blue which is flooded continents the the continents uh they build up mountains and kind of rise up out of the ocean and then they wear away over hundreds of millions of years and get buried under shallow ocean again um so at at both of these times we call this the early paleozoic but in silurian devonian and the ordovician before that which i didn't get you a picture of oh that's fine those are all those are all times um when our our region was under the ocean and um if you're on the east side of el paso driving towards towards the franklin mountains you can see all these layers from the Ordovician and Silurian and Devonian as well. Um, but we do have field trips to these age rocks. For example, Bishop Cap, which we brought up a mm -hmm. few minutes ago, that goes to Ordovician, Sil Silurian, and Devonian rocks. You'll see uh, all three time periods uh, hiking up to, to collect some minerals. Since those rocks were deposited, the mountains rose up and cracked and the cracks filled with minerals, with mineral mm -hmm. juices that made minerals. Um, and the Bishop Cap trip is one of, is one of the Goodell originals. We call them. You know, Phil Goodell brought his students on mm -hmm. several, about four or five different field trips, and Bishop Cap is one of the first field trips he ever brought a, the public out to for free. And beautiful minerals. Every time I go. Gosh, I think I've been there 30 times, and every time I go, I find new stuff. I, I discover something new at this place to to collect. 
Um, and Men- that's in the Oregon mountains. Okay. And then uh, mentioning also, as you were about, uh, you know, the way the Franklin mountains came up, you have a good picture there of scenic drive and people going along. They may notice that strata kind of at that angle here. And that's a little bit where you're talking about because you got different, well, movements of it happening that you can kind of see there and of course if you go through trans mountain i mean i love the tour that essentially you get going through there i mean just slice right down the mountains and i love both the way you get the sense of the size of the franklin mountains because it's really easy just being on the east or west side to just see them as that uh well that thing that kind of divides it and almost see it two-dimensional but then going through it like that you really get the sense of depth and time that comes along with it which is why i take that drive every time i have an an excuse to like well i could take i-10 or could i take trans mountain i will Mm -hmm. scenic drive is a a lot like trans mountain Mm -hmm. um although it it only goes through the ordovician period so you know 480 to 450 million years i guess um not exactly um but you know that view that you just showed of scenic drive i Mm -hmm. I show my students and they say that's that's not scenic drive. What are you talking about? And I tell him, Hey man, next time you go up to scenic point, instead of looking out over the city, Mm -hmm. look at what geologists look at. We're not looking out over the city as much as we're, we're looking back into the road cut. So this is what's behind you. The, the unnoticed spectacular view. The coolest thing about this photo though, is there's an ice age, an entire ice age hidden in this photo. Hmm. So you could see all these layers and then there's that big dark gray layer on the top of it in between the lighter gray layers and the dark gray layer is uh, uh, 25 to 30 million years of history is is eroded away by by glaciers. And so that was an ice age during the Ordovician. So there's actually a whole ice age up on scenic drive. Wow, that's a hell of a way to put it there, a whole ice age on scenic drive here. So coming up on the need for that next break here. So uh, let's just look at, uh, so we were looking at the the Vonian period here, which we have up on screen. So just to show people the continued times that we were covered by uh, water here in this area and the progression of the plate tectonics, as it's understood here, then we then had the Pennsylvanian era, the Mississippian era, in which you're getting a little bit closer to what you can recognize here. And then really here, and this is the one we'll get into next segment here, the Cretaceous, when you're starting to recognize some landmark here and some, well, what would become international boundaries here. But there's also some very specific things that if people aren't familiar with your history, most specifically, they may not know about uh, the discoveries that have happened into our area. So let's get into that next segment here as we talk about what happened in those interim periods, and particularly that Cretaceous period, and how people can very directly see that now here again. Uh, join Joined in studio by Eric Kappas and by Jim Tolbert with Celebration of Our Mountains here. we got a lot more to talk about El Paso's geologic history, so we'll be back right after this break. You'll be sticking around, right? Absolutely. Be here. Actually, <laughs> excellent here. So we'll get more into that after this break here with more of the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Pepe, you are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. 
El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KT. Thank you all very much for being here with us on this Saturday morning for the El Paso History Radio Show. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Had at least one question come in here, and I may have been a little remiss in talking about it. You may have noticed the transition that has happened with the program. I am hosting the program now after retirements of our longtime hosts, of course, uh, Jackson Polk and Melissa Sargent here. But we're keeping the legacy going here. Continuing on from the Leon Metz program, a uh, better part of 30 years ago now, if not exactly. So keeping that going and talking about El Paso history, personally important to me. And of course, we still have some contributions that are going to be coming up from uh, all those involved parties because uh, they're still involved in listening. They're texting me right now, at least a couple of them. And so talking about that, we also have a history moment coming up uh, beginning of next hour that you'll hear more of that voice here. And of course, the input on this show, we stand on the shoulders of giants doing a lot of this kind of a work, and we certainly respect and appreciate what has happened there, uh, including some of our other partners on the show, Rick Kern's music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio. Go to talkandrockradio.com to hear him talking about some of the musical history and the people that came through this area about it. And, of course, one of our more further sponsors on the program, uh, call 588-1850-915, 588-1850. 1850 for Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker, Heritage Real Estate. Patrick is an excellent real excellent realtor to go to for El Paso homes for sale or rent. Again, 915-588-1850 here. So, again, joined back in studio here by uh, Eric Kappas and uh, Jim Tolbert with Celebration of Our Mountains. But also, of course, you got the shirt on there, Eric, about uh, how you are involved with uh, still talking and teaching about the geologic history of our area with Southwest University. Yeah, so uh, I, I went to graduate school here. That's how I learned the geology and uh, I was leading field trips and visiting schools, um, doing you know doing free field trips for celebration of our mountains, and sort of teaching you know as a as a grad student at UTEP. Mm-hmm. And so I you know I didn't really expect this, but I was really looking for a job where I could stay here, where I could teach here, where I could continue to do field trips, and where I could continue to go visit kids in in schools and. And teach them about the amazing geology. And um, the the bosses at Southwest University approached me and offered me a job doing exactly that, teaching uh, teaching about nature and offering free field trips and school visits, talks for clubs. Um, Southwest University now hosts the El Paso Cactus and Rock Club. And so Hmm. that club now meets on the campus at SU, which is on 1414 Geronimo. (laughs) 
And, um, and so, again, talking about a little of your personal history here, we had uh, popped up right before that break that uh, picture of the Cretaceous period, uh, oceans and seas that cut here. So we are kind of right in that middle section that slices through the otherwise more or less recognizable North American continent. You can clearly see Greenland there at the top of the picture and what would become Florida when the oceans got a little bit lower. And so that's an important point to point out here very briefly because, of course, uh, that involving uh, – what your all well, personal discovery you have of some of the dinosaur tracks were along the oceans of that sea, on the shores of that sea, I guess I should say. So UTEP takes, uh, I don't know, 15 to 20 different classes out to Mount Cristo Rey each year um, to see rocks from this time period, the Cretaceous. And uh, and then there's uh, some igneous rocks. Uh, Jackson Jackson loves to talk about a a hippopissal tracheandesite dome. He, that's mm -hmm. his favorite geological term. Oh, ever. mine too. Yeah, I remember that from the, the way we put it in the <laughs> uh, the video at the time. Hyperbissal andesite pluton. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so um, that's Mount Cristo Rey. It's a, a, a magma blob mm -hmm. that pushed up a bunch of Cretaceous sedimentary rocks or layers from the Cretaceous period. Um, when U UTEP was bringing students out here for, uh, I guess since 1955, pretty regularly. Um, but no one was looking for footprints. I I'm a self-proclaimed footprint nerd or a footprint geek. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I found footprints. But yeah, our, our, our best exposure of dinosaur fossils and our only dinosaur fossils in the El Paso region are mostly at Mount Cristo Rey and their dinosaur footprints from four different types of dinosaurs. And also we have some crocodile scratch marks, swimming, swimming traces oh, from wow. crocodiles. Um, and that of course is owned by Insight Science Center, I believe they're mm -hmm. called now. Um, there's even an app. They just put out an app. You can do your own tour. Um, but otherwise, the property is free and open to the public. Um, you might want to notify Border Patrol if you're going right. out there. They got some signs out there um, along those lines, yeah, I believe. I, I got questions. I've been going out there, you know, several times a month for 20 years. And I even got questioned the other day by Border Patrol. Fair enough here. Well, we got the music coming in right now. We'll talk more about those dinosaur tracks because the story of them is interesting and getting to some more of the geologic features of our area. And again, we had a question come in about when is that next hike? We'll talk more further about that. But celebrationsormountains.org is a place to find that. But otherwise, stay tuned back after the top of the hour news here on News Radio 690 KTSM. See you all then. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. 
Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm Agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-592-4549. 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. 
Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020 with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Cuddle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe the Franklin Mountains in El Paso run almost north and south and separate our city into what we call the east side and the west side. In the 1850s, a man named Benjamin Franklin Kuntz owned much of the land that is now El Paso, and that is how the mountain got its name. The 15-mile-long mountain is several miles wide in places, and the Franklins are perhaps the start of the Rocky Mountains going north, depending upon which geologist you talk to. I was seven years old when I first hiked into the Franklins, and now I love to drive through Trans Mountain Road to see the geology there, or on Scenic Drive to get a great view of El Paso, New Mexico, Juarez, and the border with Mexico. I recommend you visit the Franklin Mountain State Park if you want to get out into the mountains. They have a visitor center just off of Trans Mountain Road on the mountains west side with lots of information about the mountain and many trails there to experience a hike firsthand. Or you can stay in your car and drive around the park where you will see spectacular desert and mountain views. If you're in good shape, ask about hiking up to Cottonwood Springs where very large trees grow on the mountainside around that spring. Wear sturdy boots, take a cell phone and water, and maybe a walking stick. It's a good way to spend a day. I'm Jackson Polk for the El Paso History Radio Show. And again, uh, Jackson, of course, a uh, longtime host on this program, and Melissa Sargent have retired and passed the torch here, and we're very happy to keep talking about El Paso history, as we will, of course, continue to do so. Also mention of a great partner in our El Paso history work, Barbara Given Bainey, who is the operator of the great Facebook page group called Remember in El Paso When. Go there for archive pictures galore, amazing different stories about different aspects of our history with a pretty extensive group there 33,000 members at last check but please remember these administrators have worked hard in researching for photos with our history attached when they use your photos at please give them credit to the site here of course the chief admin and owner uh, and historian uh, Barbara Given Bainey admins uh, Rick Duncan Rick Nahara Margaret D Smith and uh, Paul Louie and moderators Ben Vincent and Ken Weiss usually looking for assistance with most of that so again the you know, El, remember in El Paso when we greatly appreciate them here and also appreciate some of the other people we have over on the social media uh, chiming in this morning. Uh, Jenny Duarte of El, 
uh, Valdespino, uh, Rose Rodriguez, of course, Barbara Gibbon Bainey over there, Dale Hansen, Woody Wav, uh, Angie Salazar uh, checking in from uh, other parts, Rose Matthews all the way from Tennessee, amongst others, uh, Pueblo, Colorado, was Angie is, uh, Las Cruces here, uh, Northeast El Paso, West Valley City, Utah from uh, Maria Baragan, and uh, Herbert von Feilich up in Las Cruces, who is going to be our guest coming in next week, actually. But we'll talk further about it here a little bit later. Because right now in studio, we are, of course, joined by, uh, of course, Jim Tolbert and uh, Eric Kappas with uh, Celebration of Our Mountains. And uh, Rick Garvin there thanking us as well. Happy to have us along here. And I think hi to you as well, Jim. So Celebration of Our Mountains, talking about some of those hikes we were just hearing about. Uh, you all focus on a lot of mirror. And a question had come up as we were in the break here about when is the next hike here? Again, if people want to find anything about it, celebrationofourmountains.org, right? Well, the next hike is tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I think Cap. that's Eric's. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, Paul Galvan, uh, another board member, is going to take the lead on that hike. Uh, he actually knows it better than me now. I, he huh. he was my uh, my assistant at first, and then he just took it over and knows the rocks better than me out there. Uh, my favorite thing at Bishop Cap, I mean, other than I think there's four or four or five different colors of fluorite, which is my favorite hmm. mineral. Um, but if you hike up onto the ridge, there are ant hills made of quartz crystals. So the ants have oh, wow. dug, dug through this deposit, and the the ant hills themselves are piles of quartz, small quartz crystals. So the place is phenomenal. The view of uh, the view of the northern Franklin Mountains from the Oregon Mountains is is unbelievable from there. Um, definitely a field trip worth going on. Absolutely here. So, again, you got a lot of these tours and trips coming up here. I mean, just looking down the list of the ones uh, currently on the books, even just through uh, late April here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight-ish going on there. So there's a lot of events that you all hold, again, year-round, as you have pointed out. Exactly. Exactly. And the best way for people to kind of keep track of them is, is to go to celebrationofourmountains.org and look at the calendar pages or look at the events pages and just see what's coming up. And everybody needs to know we're adding new field trips all the time now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, keep coming back, keep finding out what's there. We try to let people know through a newsletter, uh, through some digital flyers, through the El Paso hiking meetup group. So, and different ways that we do that. So it's, it's, um, it's the way to kind of get to know what's going on. I mean, gosh, it's almost the end of the month. Is that uh, right? <laughs> we're, we're, we're that right? This is crazy. Anyway, coming up on the 26th will be a, a couple hikes in, in the Waco Tanks area. One of them's uh, to look at the petroglyphs, and the other one's just a hiking tour mm-hmm. of the of Waco Tanks. They are uh, put on by Waco Tanks uh, State Park. And their reservations are required. So go to our site, go to that uh, particular hike on Saturday, March 26th, look at the uh, reservation number and and make a reservation for that. Uh, and then, of course, I've already mentioned the fact that on March 31st, we're going to do the uh, first segment of our mission trails, Isleta, Socorro, uh, and uh, the Tigua Indians. But there's more coming up. I mean, April, I can't believe this. Chihuahuan Desert <laughs> Nature Park, yep. uh, Red House Mountain Foothills. Um, gosh. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. Useful plants. Eric's got a number of useful plants where we talk about how plants uh, can be used uh, medicinally or, or which plants to be aware of. We also have some, some astronomy sections. So a lot of events coming up here. And again, an important point to point out is except for any logistical like parking fees, that kind of thing. These events are free, but also important to point out, I do feel, is that you all do take donations. We do take donations. We're always looking for uh, good sponsors. Uh, We've got some really good sponsors like El Paso Water Mm -hmm. and Job and CSA uh, and Hunt. Uh, And we're always looking for good, good sponsors, but we also take donations. And people can make a donation online, but uh, that's that's probably the easiest way to do it. But if they want a faster way to do it or a way that all of their money is going to get to us, 
uh, they should uh, maybe email me and I'll let them know how to do it. It's and my email address is Diego Talbert at gmail.com. Yep. Diego, as it was often being said uh, on this program, <laughs> Diego Tolbert at gmail.com is that number here. So actually, I actually think we got a quick question about that right now. Let's just take that right now. Uh, we do have uh, Judy with a question here. Judy, thanks for joining us. You bet. Okay. I have a question here, guys. Hmm? Okay. Do we meet? Where do we meet? Uh, at what time do we meet for this Bishop's Cap trip? Uh, do we meet in one place? Uh, and take a bus, or do we go uh, in our own car up there? And um, oh yeah, and we need, do we need reservations with you guys? So unless the the best thing to do if you're any if you're interested in any field trip with us is go to the website. And uh, once you get on our website, you click on the calendar link, and under the calendar, you ch you can find the field trip you're interested in. Um, on that date right and then once you click on that link there's a page for each field trip with all the information that you're looking for the meeting time the meeting place the level of difficulty um, also if you need a, a lot of our geological field trips you need a high clearance vehicle you need a, a vehicle um, not like a honda civic but something more like a Jeep or an SUV or a pickup truck. And so all that information is on the web page. Um, if you don't feel like doing so much clicking, uh, which I totally understand, then you can Google Bishop Cap Field Trip Celebration of Our Mountains and the, the web page for that field trip will come up. Um, we've you know, got... I want to say something about the high clearance vehicles. If you don't own one, uh, don't let that dissuade you because you can always show up and usually people who do have the high clearance vehicles will be glad to have you uh, come aboard. Yeah, I, I have a high clearance vehicle and I have a, a friend I call Tia Velma and she rides with me on almost every trip. Um, otherwise, she wouldn't be able to join us. And so, yeah, people are you, uh, people are always very generous about offering rides uh, to those who do not have a high clearance vehicle. So don't let that keep you away from the field trip. Uh, you can always hitch a ride. Is that um, about answer your question there, Judy? Oh, yes. Thank you so much. I do appreciate your help. Oh, absolutely. I mean, getting people out involved in this is great. So you have a good one there today. Thank you. I appreciate it there. Uh, we will take a call here on occasion. We've had a couple coming in here. I guess we haven't put out that phone number here this hour. That number to call is 915-544-5876-544 KTSM. We're talking a lot about some of the history we got coming up here and uh, some appreciation coming in as well. Uh, Jamie Coffinbagger over on the uh, social media Facebook. Uh, appreciative. Uh, thank you for all the valuable information. Amazing. And Jim Lott's speech uh, saying, uh, howdy from uh, Salado, Texas. Former broadcast engineer for KTSM, KHA, KFOX, KINT. A lot of being up on a lot in the mountains there and uh, celebrating our mountains in that own particular way here, I guess, for that kind of a standpoint and individual. So let's, uh, real quick, before we get to the end of this segment here, we've been talking a lot about the oceans, and uh, people may have seen uh, this one that we popped up there when it came to the uh, recent rich geologic, I mean, it's all relative because, you know, a, a geologic moment can be, a lot of lifetimes here, but this is getting more familiar to people here when we were in the uh, Cretaceous period. But then there are a couple other bits of uh, ocean and sea that did cover us here, including uh, the Pleistocene here that you popped up a little bit more about the talking about, uh, as you were mentioning there a little bit earlier, Eric, that there were more just lakes and other bodies of water that covered this area, right? So the last time the ocean flooded this area was during the Cretaceous, during the age of dinosaurs, which we kind of, yeah right there you've got the image up uh, we were on the western shore mm -hmm. and of course that's where our dinosaur tracks are that was the last time the ocean really flooded over our continent but since then our continent has risen up out of the water uh, and as the rio was making its way towards the gulf of mexico slowly but surely it used to fill up these large valleys around us with water and um the in the Pliocene, for example, there was a, a lake 
that covered most of the uh, northern part of Chihuahua in Mexico. So most of Chihuahua was under one super lake, you could call mm -hmm. it, I guess. There's probably a better word for that. Oh, um, I'll buy it. I mean, it makes sense here. People looking on the screen there, they can see on the right-hand side the Franklin Mountains here and all the water and the currents around it here. Again, getting a little bit more familiar, but just alien enough to think like, oh, yeah, that was had to have been a long time ago. And so that's why, amongst other things, We've got, again, those sediments, those fossils all over our area of aquatic nature because it was literally all over and why you can find them at literally the top of the Franklin Mountains here. And, of course, we were talking a bit about Mount Cristo Rey as we were here, here against that aerial view. Actually, have a gentleman on the line here that is very qualified to make that comment here because I believe we have a Ruben here. Ruben, thanks for joining us. Hey, Andrew, good morning. Good morning to Jim and Eric. Good morning. Good morning. And Andrew, congratulations to you for taking over and and leading the uh, the charge of El Paso history. Oh, much appreciated here, but I'm more interested in your expertise when it comes to the uh, aspects of Mount Cristo Rey. You being, of course, uh, with the uh, Cristo Rey Restoration Committee, you've been a very important part of people being able to enjoy that area in the modern area. So you got a, an interesting perspective on that whole location, I'm sure. Right, and and we do, and you know what? I've, we've we've been kind of. Uh, keeping down low here for the last uh, couple of years because of the pandemic mm -hmm. and uh eric we've missed you up there with your with your hikes and talks and gym but uh it looks like we're opening back up a little bit at a mm -hmm. time uh Sweet. our next hike is going to be up there on the 15th of uh of april for good friday so a lot of people uh -huh. calling in and, and asking about uh you know when we can hike crystal ray again and there is people hike you know hiking it and climbing it now mm -hmm. uh, but they do it up there on their own uh at, at their own risk pretty much because we don't have security so that's one of the things that uh that I just wanted to touch base that uh you know we're, we're slowly coming back around and trying to get that uh opened up again for people to enjoy absolutely so april 15th for people who just missed that there will be that good friday hike and that's a big event where Again, y'all don't really provide security, but there's going to be a lot of people out there and a lot of uh, more better ability for people to go out there if they really want to, I guess is a good way to put it, right? Yeah, there's there's safety in numbers, and, and we open up the gates at 6 o'clock in the morning. We'll have volunteers on site, uh, the few volunteers that we have left. that We've lost a lot of volunteers that just uh, kind of got spooked. Unfortunately, we lost the president of our association to COVID last year, mm. and everybody kind of got spooked about it. So. You know, some of the uh, volunteers aren't coming back, and we're working with skeleton crews and trying to get uh, the trail back in shape. We will have a work session next uh, next Saturday, the 26th. Hmm. We're going to have a work session up there and trying to clean up the area and, and get the trail filled up and get it ready for that uh, Good Friday hike. Absolutely. So, okay, very important notes there. Appreciate you calling in and letting people know what is going on with that a very prominent bit of our geologic history and what people can hopefully enjoy again here before too long. Good luck with all the work that involved with that. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the work that you guys do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you all are probably, I, Eric's taking down notes as we speak here, so I'm sure that uh, at least some information will get put out there as part of this here. So Definitely want to promote that trip on uh, Good Friday. Yeah, and the work day on the 26th. I mean, um, don't worry, Ruben, I got your back. Thanks for all you all do right, out there. It. Yeah, yeah we will, it, we will get Thank the you. word out, sir. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much for the call, Ruben. Do appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All thank right. You. Absolutely. Here. All right. That's going to take us straight through the need for this next break right now. So we are, again, uh, it's scratching the surface with a lot of El Paso's history when it comes to the geologic nature. We haven't even gotten to the formation of the Franklins yet, which is absolutely one I want to get to here. So we got to take that next break right now. But coming out of that, we'll talk more about Again, why the things are the way they are when you look at the natural history and the geologic and the terrain of our area. Again, joined here by Eric Kappas and Jim Tolbert with Celebration of Our Mountains. So more on that after this break. So stay tuned for more of the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. 
Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915 915- today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso history. Got to mention who's coming in here next week. Of course, we are continuing our mission to talk about El Paso history and educate further about it. Coming up on March 26th, guest is going to be Edibet von Feilich on another colorful character from the Mexican Revolution era in El Paso, Zach Cobb. A political appointee as a customs collector, became a key person for all of the Mexican factions fighting in northern Mexico. He not only raided the much-talked-about stash house, but was also instrumental in cutting off Villa and, uh, well, Harry will argue, single-handedly caused his final downfall. So that'll be coming in next week here. And then, of course, one more sponsor we've got to remind you about, Mission Del Rey Southwest. Go there with your out-of-town visitors for souvenirs, jewelry, gifts, and decor items. They have great discounts in the clearance area, now on scratch and dent items, as well as closeouts. 
again to find them missiondelray.com or visit their new 12,000 square foot showroom on Lee Trevino mention the El Paso History Radio Show for a discount and you can also give them a call at 915-440-2140 that's 915-440-2140 we really, really do appreciate our sponsors because they have some great aspects of history on their own, but uh, helping us continue our mission to talk about El Paso's history and educate our people about it, well, we find that to be very worthy, if I'm even a little bit biased here. But more gentlemen that are biased in terms of their uh, focus on history here, I mean, y'all are very involved in it. I mean, that's why we talk about you week over week with just some of the hikes coming up here. Of course, we have uh, Jim Tolbert and Eric Kappas with Celebration of Our Mountains. So we were talking a bit and had a great opportune call from uh, Mount Cristo Ray. So again, the dinosaur tracks that are out there and the nature of the uh, the formation itself, we really didn't get into this. We mentioned the the, the phrase hyperbyssal andesite pluton, but essentially what that translates, and I love that phrase, I've had that memorized ever since it was in the legends of our mountains here, I will freely admit. But I mean, basically what that means, it was a volcano that never happened. So what you're looking at when you actually look at this is from the uh, Google Maps view here. Uh, you see it. I mean, it's got an egg shape to it. And then the raised area in the center is the actual peak. You're looking at essentially the plumbing of a, of a volcano that never erupted. It raised up. And so when you're looking at, again, correct me if I'm wrong here, Edgar, that, that base around there used to be a dome that then has worn away over the millennia to now reveal what was the magma that then just kind of didn't make it. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't describe it any better. It's uh, the core of the central core and the peak itself of the mountain is is a cooled magma blob. And that magma was on its way to making a volcano, uh, but then it stopped. And so that's why, among other things, with those dinosaur tracks, I mean, they were so that was flat and a seashore or lake shore, as it was back in the previous uh, eras of history we were talking about here. So the reason that then those dinosaur tracks were looking up on screen right now is because as that then volcano trying to be volcano formed, it pushed up the dirt and created the, again that dome. So you ended up with the ground kind of doing this whole swelling thing, and now it's worn away. And now that's why you got on the edges, those dinosaur tracks. Yeah, yeah. So most of the footprints, um, except uh, further away from the, the peak itself, but most of the footprints are on, on the wall or even slightly overhanging because really? the layers have been pushed up so steep. Also, uh, I should probably mention that the, the best exposures of the footprints are in retired quarries from the El Paso right. company. And so there's a lot of, you know, people, some people say that El Paso was built on bricks. And I mean, I don't know about all that, but um, the brick industry in the 20s, they were selling 100,000 bricks per day. Wow. So they were making and selling 100,000 bricks per day. Uh, all of the material for making those bricks uh, was mined at, at Cristo Rey, uh, literally mud that was gushed between dinosaurs' toes got used to make bricks in El Paso. So built on our own geologic history is absolutely a way to put it in this region here. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit of a fascinating aspect here. Tell you what, we got to take that next break. But coming out of this next break, let's get into another volcanic event, but kind of in the opposite direction here with Kilburn's Hole, which is his own bit of fascinating nature here just getting into some of the and then we got to talk about how the franklins were formed i keep missing that one we got to get to that here because we want to talk about one of the biggest definitions of our area that's it here so again joined here in studio by eric Kappis and jim tolbert with celebration of our mountains we'll talk more about our geologic history and again how they can help you enjoy it coming out of this break so stay tuned for more of the el paso history radio show you are listening to a break in our facebook streaming of the el paso history radio show which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. 
Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show arc. Coming up this week, only in El Paso, Inc., what's left of the once powerful El Paso Times printing press now being dismantled and sold for scrap, why more young El Pasoans are choosing the workforce instead of college after high school graduation, and a tired downtown Art Deco gem will soon be restored after El Paso County approved tax incentives. El Paso's business journal is available for home and business delivery, and you can find them online at elpasoinc.com or uh, online at elpasoinc.com is the best way to find them is the way they want us to say it there. So uh, please support them because uh, they also put our promos over there and helping us talk about El Paso history here. So uh, getting back into our subject here for the day, of course, joined further in studio here by uh, Eric Kappas and uh, Jim Tolbert here with Celebration of Our Mountains here. We've been talking a lot about the trips and tours that are available along with it here, but again, also some of the events that have literally shaped our landscape we got to talk about the Franklin Mountains because we have been talking a lot about the seas that have done it here. And I mean, it makes sense to, to do that in this order because, among other things, there are literally fossils re relevant to those eras on the tippy top of the Franklin Mountains. And so from a just general standpoint, the question may come from a layperson of how the heck did that happen? And the simple answer is that that used to be, again, in the 
umpteen times that we've been covered with water, that used to be the base of it before the plate tectonics decided that we were going to have mountains here. Yeah, so our region was a, a basin for most of its history. And the Franklin Mountains, uh, for me, are, are for a geologist, are a relatively young feature on the landscape. Um, you remember I was talking in the beginning about Proterozoic and how you mm. drive up Trans Mountain through this super volcano. Well, before the Franklin Mountains rose up, that stuff was not uh, up at one mile elevation. Mm -hmm. That stuff was 12,000 feet lower, so several miles down. Um, the Franklins began to form about 25 million years ago. They raised up. Uh, there's actually a UTEP professor who's currently studying all this and, and rewriting the book about it. Oh, wow. Rick, Ricketts is his name. So exciting stuff about how the Franklins rose up and the timing and kind of our, the recent re, recent geological history. That stuff's all getting researched and rewritten now. But um, all these limestones, uh, all these layers from under the ocean, including our oldest rocks, they were all flat until recently and what's going on now is that the earth's crust is breaking apart uh, eastern north america is moving away from western north america and there's a big rip or a tear in the earth's crust and as as the earth's crust is breaking apart beneath of us uh, blocks rise up and blocks sink down so mm -hmm. the franklin mountains is one of the along with the oregon mountains the franklin mountains is part of this big block that's rising up. In fact, maybe you didn't know, but um, back in the 1800s, when these mountains were first described, the Franklin Mountains were originally part of the Oregon Mountains. And so they were originally hmm. named the Oregon Mountains and the mountains to the north of the Oregons uh, because it's one continuous long mm -hmm. north-south block that rose up kind of sort of together. Um, of course, the ranges were given different names after that, but yeah, we used to, we used to live in the Oregon mountains. <laughs> That's an interesting point to make here, but also the way that it actually formed. So a lot of people may be familiar with the idea of, you know, generally plate tectonics, you know, subduction, you know, the collision of plates pushing mountains up, but the way it'll pass those mountain forms always fascinate me. And you can kind of see it depending on, you were talking about looking at it from like Bishop's Cap down south here. Mm -hmm. And if you're in just the right light, you can almost see the flat surface on the west side of it. You can kind of divine. I mean, a lot of wear has happened here. And we got a picture up there of the Thunderbird area, but more from uh, kind of straight on. So the way it actually happened, the way it's always been described to me, is that uh, the Franklin Mountains kind of rose up as if they were flat and then kind of got pushed up almost and that's how you end up with you know the fossils at the top here because it used to be seabed so it's almost kind of like a, a swinging arm the way i'm describing it here as and that's why the west side you can almost see that flat surface and then on the east side you then see the strata that was exposed by that upheaval mm -hmm. yeah so it's a tilted a tilted fault block range there's three ways to make mountains and you've already named two mm -hmm. one is to crunch things together mm -hmm. one is to break things apart and the other way is a, a volcano is magma rising up to make a mountain so those are the three different ways at least in intro geology those are the three <laughs> different ways that we make mountains uh and we actually have all three of them here mm -hmm. so the sierra de juarez the juarez mountains those are from stuff crunching together mm -hmm. the franklin that, mountains yeah. right across the valley are from stuff breaking apart and then we have Mount Cristo Rey, which, of course, um, the geologists are very picky about what they call a mountain. Uh, I try to be more relaxed about that. But technically, Mount Cristo Rey would need to be a thousand feet in order for it to be a mountain. So during, uh, during the <laughs> okay. pilgrimage, when was the pilgrimage? We were going to plug this for Ruben. During the pilgrimage on the 15th, please, mm -hmm. please bring a rock up to the top for us. Uh, we are... Uh, we're starting a movement called Make Mount Cristo Rey a Proper Mountain Geologically. <laughs> what, how, what's what's the difference we're missing there? Because how actually high is Cristo Rey? I actually don't know that offhand. Oh, gosh. I think it's at eight. eight and so it has to be a 1,000 feet above the surrounding landscape. And I think Mount Cristo Rey is 600 feet or 800 feet 
So we got a, we got a, we got a lot of rocks to go. Yeah. We got a lot of stacking to do (laughs) there. Okay. Everybody bring pet rocks and leave them up at the top for us. Thank you. So, and then bringing up Cristo Rey, of course, I mean, so we've talked about some of the general formations, you know, how the Rio Grande moves through has carved out parts, but how the Franklin mountains rose up. So when we also talk about the volcanoes that have come along with it, Mount Cristo Rey being the one there, but then a different one there, this Cristo Rey here, a different one that is almost, I mean, it's a volcano, but almost in the little opposite direction. And that would be Kilburn's Hole, which we're showing here now. So Kilburn Hole is probably the most famous volcano in our region. Um, It's nationally famous. Maybe you could even say world famous because the Apollo astronauts trained there. Oh, really? Um, So going back to the formation of the Franklins, our our crust, uh, our regional crust underneath of El Paso is breaking apart and we call this the rio grande rift that's Mm -hmm. the name for the big rip or tear in the earth um this is happening now this is happening today this is current geology uh currently shaping the landscape in many ways and one of those ways is when you get a big crack through the crust then magma can rise from very very deep in the earth up this crack and that's what kilburn hole is it is our our youngest volcano regionally uh, I think the the best age that I've read is about twenty thousand years. Believe it or not, that's young for for geologists anyway. Um, it also not only is it our youngest, but it has the deepest roots of any of mm-hmm. our local volcanoes. And it's spectacular because it erupted very fast. the The magma came rushing to the surface, and when it hit groundwater trapped under the surface, it exploded. So it doesn't make a very large hill per se, um, just a very large crater, about a a mile and a half in diameter. So quite a large crater. Um, And also it sampled rocks from the Earth's crust as it was erupting. So you can, there's one right there. So that that rock you're showing is called peridotite or the gemstone peridot is found in there. And um, they're very common at Kilburn Hole and at a couple other volcanoes out there in the Petrio, vol- we call it the Petrio Volcanic Field. Mm, um, mm-hmm. So this is just one of a hundred volcanoes out in the West Desert, the youngest. Um, but this is this rock, this green stuff that people find out there, it's spectacular because it's not even from the Earth's crust. This is from below the Earth's crust. This is from Mm -hmm. 14 or 15 miles deep through the crust into the layer below, which we call the mantle, which makes up most of the Earth. So, I mean, we dragged from underground here. And I love the idea that, yeah, we've had a lot of volcanoes here. We've got kind of your innies and your outies. I guess you could put it there with Cristo Rey getting pushed out. And then with the, because people, I think, if they see it or I don't know about it, I think, oh, man, what big meteor hit out here? No, that was just an underground explosion that then excavated all that rock and dirt and earth out there at Kilburn's Hole. Now, you can hike around it. I mean, it's around about seven miles around, I think, or at least that's what I was told when I was hiking that as a younger scout here, whether they were lying or not. I didn't have a pedometer on me, so I took their word for it. So, I mean, it's a beautiful place you can go out and see here. And, I mean, the beautiful thing is that it's just another weird part of our geologic history. One more I want to touch on here before we have to hit this next break is, of course, um, Waco Tanks, because you mentioned the hike that you're all going to have out there. And that is just its own geologic oddity because it's just this outcropping of rock in the middle of, I mean, it's not even really next to any of the serious mountains it's kind of isolated by itself here that is then another just one of those weird bits of the fantastic geology we have out here uh waco tanks is another almost volcano Mm -hmm. Um, not as visual or spectacular as mount crystal ray but another magma blob of uh, sort of similar age it's about 10 million years younger but another magma blob that didn't quite reach volcano status um that was also lifted up during the same event that we're experiencing today, the Rio Grande Rift. And so it was lifted up by uh, by faulting and stuff like that. Waco Tanks is, uh, of course, awesome there because there's these large pools of water mm-hmm. that form and stay out there. Uh, there are also a bunch of caves. So the big fractures in this, in this bedrock makes large caves that you can explore. I even went in a cave that had water year-round Yep. Uh, that people scuba dive into, which I couldn't believe. Um, oh, wow. But yeah. then again, also uh, because of the petroglyphs and pictographs out there mm-hmm. that you're showing, 
Um, those pigments actually, the greens and blues in the pictographs out there, they came from Oro Grande for quite a bit further north in the oh, yeah. Tula Rosa Basin. Um, Oro Grande is another, another one of the Goodell originals, another field trip that he opened mm -hmm. up to the public. Uh, Oro Grande was a mining district about 100 years ago. But anyway, uh, the, the people carried rocks for, oh gosh, I don't know how many, 50 miles south. I don't know how far north yeah. Oro Grande is from Waco Tanks, but it's 50, take. 50 yeah. miles um, down to, to powder that rock and make green and blue pigments, which of course you can still see if you, um, if you go on one of our field trips on Saturday, March 26th absolutely here so a lot more we're going to try to get to uh, to mention up a couple of the things here with some of the trips and some of the features we got in our region we got to take that next break right now again joined here in studio by jim tolbert and eric Cavis with celebration of our mountains we'll close out with you know how this can still be enjoyed talk more about the hikes here and any last tidbits we can fit in so back after this break with more on the el paso history radio show here on news radio 690 ktsm you are listening to a break in our facebook streaming of the el paso history radio show which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. 
Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to EP. Getting close to closing out the show here. I want to thank everyone who has tuned in for it here. Just a couple of things to remind you about. To visit the McGoffin Home State Historic Site at 1120 McGoffin Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79901. Their phone number, 915-533-5147. And go for hours of operations and events. And they are having walking tours of the area here this month. So give them a call again, 915-533-5147. And, of course, that exhibition we were talking about over the Centennial Museum, talking about water. They, through the end of April, they have the exhibit Water Slash Ways, uh, highlights a very important topic for the region and our life. Water, exploring the past, present, and future of water in El Paso and how it divides and unites us through historic, artistic, economical, political, and social lenses. Of course, that's at the Centennial Museum and Chihuahuan Desert Gardens on UTEP Avenue and Wiggins Road on the UTEP campus. But uh, in the meantime, we've been talking, of course, with uh, Jim Tolbert and Eric Cabas with Celebration of Our Mountains. A couple of topics we just need to touch on real quick here. You wanted to mention the Thunderbird here because uh, the Thunderbird is, of course, a one of the more impressive geologic features that you see on the west side here. And uh, the way it was described to me once is that some of the quarrying that's happened on the east side of the mountain, that may, uh, you know, question of, you know, how far should that go? Because if it were to extend, it might go straight into the Thunderbird, actually. So the Thunderbird, the Thunderbird is exposed on the eastern side of the mountain, particularly north of Trans Mountain Road. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, what you, we see on the west side, the actual quote unquote Thunderbird shape is some of the most ancient rocks again from the super volcano. So the, the Thunderbird itself is made up of rocks that were spit out of a super volcano. So that's ash, wow. ash from a super volcano. The reason it has that shape is because of the way the mountain broke mm-hmm. and revealed kind of a window. But the coolest thing about the Thunderbird is uh, because it's so old, it was covered over by ocean layers afterwards. And so mm-hmm. when you look up at the Thunderbird, above and below that are limestones, layer, layers of sediment from the ocean. And so the Thunderbird itself used to be an island. That was an island. So these oh, wow. an, this ancient volcano was here. Um, then it got eroded for quite a long time. And then um, during the Ordovician, it got covered over very slowly. And so it stood in relief. There were a number of these ancient islands in North America at that time. Um, but yeah, I mean, that we have a field trip that goes up to Thunderbird Island, we call it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can actually, there's a spot where I can lay on the beach. Oh, there you have a photo. There you are, yeah. So that's me laying on the beach of Thunderbird Island um, <laughs> with everything kind of above me as limestones and everything below me as island island deposits sandstones and conglomerates yeah all right well that's actually going to do it for us here so we didn't even get to some topics we wanted to talk about crazy cat uh, white sands but again jim last word here we hope people will find all the information on the events that you all have just go to celebration of our mountains.org celebration of our mountains.org that's uh, the best way to do it absolutely here so we'll talk more about that we'll keep bringing up y'all's events because i need to go out on one of these when it's not on a saturday anyway but we'll have to talk with y'all in future weeks here thank you all very much for joining us here on the el paso history radio program thank you radio show. we hope you'll join us again next saturday morning 10 to noon and be sure to tell a friend about us brought to you by patrick tuttle colwell banker heritage real estate 915-588-1850 by pepe's new mexico